Next question, short answer essay. This one's pretty straightforward. Again, you're asking your question in the box to begin with. Um, why, how about, how is a rainbow formed? Um, do you want them to have a character limit um, that they can't exceed a certain number of letters in their answer? Do you want them to have that rich text formatting so that they can um, use symbols and bold and underline and link things in? Do you want to allow video or audio answers for students? And do you want to time their question again? Point value, linking to an objective, create the question. Another question, fill in the blank. So it says, type the sentence you wish the test taker to see for the words you want to be blank. Simply enter an underscore. So I'm going to say, um, the first rainbow was photographed in one underscore city. So when I did that underscore, it added this answer one blank for me. So now I automatically can put my answer in. I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm just going to throw this in there. I'm looking for New York City. Again, similar um, options as before, allow partial credit. You can put a word bank up for students. So if you have um, multiple blanks in your question, you could give them words to choose from. Or if you only had one blank, but you wanted to give them lots of choices, you could do that as well. Or do you care about it being case sensitive? So if they type in lowercase n and lowercase y, should it still be accepted or not? Timing your question, we've seen that before. Points, we've seen that before. Learning objectives, then create your question. Few more questions to go. Matching questions. So this is the overall questions. This is kind of like the instructions. So match the color on the left to the um, type of street sign. So my question is going to be stop sign. And the answer, oh, the color's on the left. The question is going to be red, and the street sign is on the right, so that's going to be a stop sign. And again, the question is going to be yellow, and the street sign is going to be yield. Um, I don't want any more than that. I'm just going to match those two. Um, Filler words would be additional ones that you want to throw in there. So I'm just going to throw in like um, no passing and um, slow so that they've got some additional ones to choose from that maybe would make it a little harder to figure out what matches, matches to what. Again, partial credit, subjective question, timed question point value, learning objectives, create question. Okay, the last one is from a question bank. So as you create these questions, you can put them into your own personal question bank, or you can create a question bank in your resources. And when you click on from a question bank, it takes you to your resources, and it would list any potential uh, questions that you've made in there. So that is another option for gathering questions. Again, a page break, you could put in so that you've got, that's this little blank area here, an automatic page break for those students. And text, maybe you need to describe a question. So for this question, um, consider unit one of your textbook. So that text goes with whatever the following question is. 
I'm going to move it by clicking on reorder. I can move that then to the appropriate question. So they need to look in their book for the city that the first rainbow was photographed in. And then I'm going to hit save changes. If you don't hit save changes, it won't stay in the right place. So now that text is going to be right before this particular question that they need to use that for. Um, another thing in that options, remember, is you can add questions that you've created to a bank so you can save your questions. Okay, we're almost done here. A couple more things about the tabs. Once your questions are all set up, you can preview your quiz as a student would see it. So you just hit preview, begin, and take the quiz. So you can see what some of these questions look like. Sky is blue, true or false. Here's the multiple choice, what color is the sky? Here's the ordering question, so students can move the order to the correct place. Here's the short answer essay, that's where the student would type their answer. Here's the text box. Here's the fill in the blank, so they would type in their answer in the blank. Here's the um, matching one, where they had extra options that they had to match to the other side and students type in their answer into the correct place. So that's a preview mode. Once students start having answers that they have completed the test, you'll start to see them popping up. So here's test student, the one student that's in my class. They have not attempted the test yet. It would tell me when their latest attempt was. It would give me a score on the test because it would score it automatically. And then I could see their test if I wanted to by clicking view attempts. And then finally, the comments. This allows you to look at student comments on the test if you created that as an option. So just as a quick review, you want to start on making your quizzes or your tests in your sample folder. Go to add materials, add a test or a quiz. From there, once you're in your sample quiz or your test or your quiz you added, you have all these different tabs that you can work with. Don't forget to do, do your settings, otherwise your students might not have access to your test or quiz.